Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kirill Pierre, and I uh, work at the Ministry for Health in Haiti in the Directorate for Epidemiology Research and Labs. And I am focal point for epidemiologic answer to cholera. Let me uh, brief you on the uh, cholera situation here in the country uh, from October 22 to June 23. Historically, in October 2010, there was the first outbreak of cholera. And it lasted until February 2019 with more than 800,000 suspected cases and 10,000 uh, casualties. And then three years with no cases. And unfortunately, in October 2022, we had to face the resurgence of cholera in the country, the confirmed positive case of VBO1. Ogawa in Savan Pistache near Port-au-Prince. Other cases were also confirmed in Cité Soleil and from October 2022 until June 18, 2023, we had a short of 50,000 suspected cases, over 3,000 confirmed cases and 45,000 thousand hospitalized cases and 759 deaths. So you can see the evolution of those suspected cases uh, over that span of time. And but you can also look at a map of the confirmed cases that are all over the country, but are uh, concentrated in the West. This is the situation uh, county by county from October 22 to June 23. There are a lot of suspected cases in Artibonite uh, in the center and also in the West with 22,000 cases. Uh, a lot of confirmed cases and also the most casualties uh, because of flooding and uh, also uh, we have some uh, bad cases in the north. So that's uh, 49,000 uh, suspected cases, 45,000 hospitalized, 500 institutional deaths, 241 community deaths. Immediately after that resurgence, the ministry uh, tasked us with uh, a framework to integrate key actions with the objective to prevent deaths and reduce the incidence of cholera. It was to end in 2022. The five priority areas were governance, access to healthcare, fight against transmission, uh, and wash. I.e. drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene. With regards to governance, it is a three-level coordination structure. The highly strategic coordination with the prime minister, the different uh, ministers that are involved in this uh, fight. Then we have the task force that can actually become a national crisis unit. And the directorate of the Ministry of Health 
uh, and responsible for drinking water supply and the departmental coordination and at that level we also have regional and national uh, task force with regards to access to health care we're talking of preventive care i.e vaccination accompanied by wash uh, measures we have vaccinated uh nearly 1.2 million people but that and we're talking uh, two doses in 2022 we vaccinated uh, 0.8 million people in the western center and 2023 so far we have vaccinated 0.2 million people in the northwest and in gels we will carry on our effort with regards to fight against transmission there are two levels first the alert with the objective to reinforce epidemiological surveillance through the daily sharing of citrips at the national and departmental level. And the, and the departments actually share their uh, information at the national level. We also strengthened the lab network for confirmation. So we have uh, uh, established a departmental investigation response, response team, and it covers the activities of EMIRAs and multipurpose community health agents. However, in terms of uh, response, those teams actually uh, manage uh, the uh, investigations that are necessary for the for the color analysis and they manage the response teams we also use the community health agents because some community can be difficult to reach so we use uh versatile health agents with regards to wash drinking water sanitation and hygiene we have a specific dedicated directorate and they deal with the control of water quality and the risks of contamination. And they will deal with the regular supply of uh, drinking water. We also have the support of our partners. I won't list all of the partners. They are faithful, loyal partners who accompany us to carry out all of these different activities. Now, in terms of our key achievements, we have been able to organize regular coordination meetings between the Minister, Ministry of Public Health and its partners, including DINEPA. DINEPA is an agency of the transport ministry in charge of supplying uh, drinking water and sanitation. So we've had regular meetings. They were organized on a daily basis. 
now they're on a weekly basis. And what were the success factors here? Well, this allowed them to work on the presentation of major trends and reorient the interventions. We also have another achievement, which is the regular publication of these SITREPs that was done in the past, but it's been reinforced at the departmental and national levels. And this was successful thanks to the staff training that we were able to organize and also thanks to the motivation of the staff. There's also the alignment of our partners with the national priorities with respect to the availability of the integrated cholera action framework in our national cholera plan. We've also reinforced the capacities of the laboratories to carry out culture, stool culture, thanks to the decentralization of culture techniques through the national network of laboratories in our regional laboratories as well. So we have more laboratories now able to carry out the culture. We've also had a reactive and consolidated response with respect to these response teams, the EDIR teams accompanied by the EMIRAs. And also we use these ASCPs at the local level. Of course, we do have challenges that are still present and we're looking at solutions. Our first major challenge is the security situation, which is still critical, which uh, prevents uh, travel. It prevents the performance of activities, of all activities. So we propose to mobilize and use air transport to facilitate the supply of inputs to institutions also transport of specimens and supplies. So we do have support at the national level, but we would like to reinforce this support because sometimes the air transport is very highly in demand because land transport is extremely difficult. So we propose that this transport be reinforced air transport so that we can continue our activities. As I said, this is a major challenge we have. This remains our major obstacle that we haven't been able to remove, the critical security situation. Of course, our response activities are made difficult because it's hard for staff to travel and also due to the lack of availability of equipment and input, even at the departmental level, but between the departments as well. And the last obstacle to this is still the security situation. In terms of case management, we need to mobilize medical equipment and inputs to ensure care. But again, we have a problem to supply health centers located in remote areas that are difficult to access. Another challenge that we have at the country level is the drinking water, sanitation and hygiene issue in precarious communities. Now, in terms of short-term solutions, we propose the installation of hand washing points, the distribution of hygiene kits, and also training of staff or the population on infection prevention and control, IPC. But again, a one remaining obstacle is the financing to reinforce the drinking water distribution network. So the cost of this is still a major obstacle. There are also the beliefs of the population. We are just coming out of uh, the period of COVID. 
we had to fight with local beliefs of the population to get them on board. And now we're trying to raise their awareness to cholera. So you can imagine that this population, we in the past, we hardly ever referred to cholera. And now we're, we're really fighting to combat some of these beliefs. And a lot of the population doesn't even believe that cholera exists anymore. So this is a problem for us in the country. So we propose to continue to multiply the messages and use our local ASCPs to help us with social mobilization. We also have difficulties in performing vaccinations for security reasons, but there are also some vaccines for which there is insufficient stock. We've heard this a lot during our meeting here. There's a global uh, shortage of the stockpile. So for the vaccines that are available, we propose to work with local NGOs, especially in the areas controlled by armed gangs, but also try to mobilize the community to help us. Now, in terms of our priorities for the next year, we will continue to reinforce coordination at the different agencies, with the different agencies and ministries concerned, but, and also with the departmental agencies, we need to reinforce the surveillance and laboratory achievements in order to follow the recommendations of the Global Task Force. We also need, as I said, next year to strengthen our response activities. This establishment of the EDIR, uh, these response teams are in place, but we need to finalize their implementation in the 10 departments. And so we have four departments that already have EDIR teams. We will also continue with our training sessions or our refresher training sessions for the staff at all levels. We need to continue vaccination. And of course, another major project is the revision of our national cholera elimination plan, because this plan came to an end in 2022. So we plan to revise it and align it with the new objectives. Thank you, and I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you.